our Support Your Systems class. I'll make sure to cut this at the beginning. Welcome to Support Your Systems. Today we're doing a Pilates-based class using a small ball. I wanna show you the ball that I'm using today. It's called a Brain Speed Ball. And it's a ball that has letters and numbers on it for various different exercises. There's a YouTube channel called Fire Up Your Brain and it's with one of my mentors, colleagues, and good friends, Trent McIntyre. And each week, he offers a new brain game. Um, and it's really fun and very effective. So we're gonna implement a little of this. If you don't have letters or numbers on your ball, not to worry. I'm gonna try to supplement with some other ways of firing up your brain and asking you questions as we begin to move. But our, your small ball will do just fine for today. All right, thanks for the, the help, everybody. We're gonna put the ball to the side for right now. Let's get warm. This is a Pilates-based workout, so if you need an extra pillow for your back for some of the abdominal curls, a yoga bolster, an arc, anything you have that can help you curl up a little bit more, we will be working on some abdominals. But again, you know, you know your body much better than I do. And I want to encourage you to ask questions for yourself, make good choices, and just move with joy. So let's start to bend your knees. We're going to start to circle the shoulders up and back. I think I said this when the mic was off, but just in case, there is a link in the chat right now. One of the third comments, so if you scroll up, it's a link to the Brain Speed Ball. And it's just a great tool to have. I use it every week. I wait for that game to come out from my good friend, Trent McIntyre, who is the inventor of it. And it's just like a really fun way to get your brain fitness in. Let's start reversing your shoulder rolls. So back to front. Good. All the way around. a couple more times like this, just getting some juice in those joints. Good. From here, bring your arms out to the side, backs of the hands face front. We're going to round your upper back and touch your wrists together as you come forward. Pull your elbows back, shoulder blades come together as you pull back. Round, forward, reach. Pull all the way back. There we go. Round, forward. I had to go with longer sleeves today because I just didn't think I was going to be able to deal with it. Have you seen the pictures of Chicago? I know we're all being a little dramatic, but ooh, it does a little something to the brain and the mind that requires some treatment. <laughs> so today it's all about me bringing right in the window, getting as much, yeah, there's a little sun out there. Last one. Good. Reach both arms forward. Pull your right arm back and just twist to the right, all the way forward, twist to the left, good, all the way forward, excellent, and to the right again, all the way forward. Looking at my plants, um, if you have any level of arachnophobia, just put your earmuffs on for a moment. Um, I realized I have a spider in my house but that spider is taking care of my plant pests. So now I just say hello to it every morning <laughs> because it's eaten all the little ones. Oh, the beauty, the circle of life. One more time each side. All right, we're here for 30 minutes today, everybody, which is a good thing because we're gonna need some warm up. Now, from here, let's bend our knees, round the spine, curl the tail under, and just stretch out that low back. And then we're gonna swing back Open the chest, lift your focus. So round forward, feel your spine in almost like a long C shape, and then reach. Yeah, total symbiotic relationship. I've never been afraid of spiders, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not like keeping them as pets. But this one, I'm, I'm like respect. <laughs> Just take care of those little pesties. Eat yourself happy <laughs> and then we'll be all good <laughs> my plants will provide you with the food you take care of them so they don't die and we're all good one more time everybody reach it back good reach it forward and we're gonna stay in this rounded spine take your front arm one closest to me you're gonna make a big circle around 
and then catch it in that round spine. So we stretch, rotate, reach, catch it in the round spine. Stretch, rotate, reach. All oh, this movement is so good for our spine, especially before we take some abdominal exercises on the mat. Good, reach it forward. One more in this direction. Push through your feet. Start to feel your body get warm. Now we're gonna reverse the arm. So reach back and kind of like ride that wave of your spine, catch it forward. Reach back. It's a great opportunity to start to integrate your eyes into this by reaching, looking at your hands. Reaching, looking at your hands. Two more. Can you follow your fingers? Yes, one more. Good, I'm gonna turn around to face front. Let's come all the way up. Bend your knees. We're just gonna tap the foot out, out. Two taps each side. So this is a little brain body mix up. Some of you are like, we're not doing any abs yet. This isn't Pilates. Just be patient with me. We'll get there. One of the things I like to do is layer my workouts. So right now we're gonna get our brain going. We've got this rhythmic tap side to side, yeah? We're gonna tap one finger, two fingers. One finger, two finger. One finger, two finger. All part of getting warm, yeah? Good. One, two. One and two. Keep going. One and two. I always wonder if the train can see me and like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> one and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. Just a couple more. And good. Up and reach. Up and reach. Last two. And last one. Good. Stand with feet hip width distance. The last thing we're going to do is called a rebound in dance. It's also called, what is it, a catch curl. There's a lot of different names for it but anyone can do it. We're gonna reach up. You can even rise to the toes or lift your heels off. And then you wanna let your body weight come forward. You catch it in a round by lifting your abdo abdomen up. Like, and then you throw it to come back up to a vertical position. So if we're going a couple in a row, it might look like down catch, down reach. Down catch, down reach, okay? Are you ready? So feel yourself nice and long, reaching for the sky. Take a deep breath in, go, and reach. Catch, and reach. You can breathe however you like. I always give a suggestion. Just think of catching by lifting the front of your abdomen towards the back of your body. Good. Last two. Last one. Lift it up, hold it there. Can you grow taller? Excellent. I'm gonna take one step back and then begin to roll all the way down. Nice and easy. Hands come to the mat. Let's walk it out to hands and knees. Good. Hands underneath the shoulders. We're gonna take the foot that's closest to me out to the side. Yeah, I'll move over a little bit. Right here, yeah. So be sure that your leg isn't too far back, that it's coming out as much as possible right from the hip. And you can be on the inner edge of your foot for sure, or you can be on your full foot. Whatever feels like the best stretch for you. And for this one, I'm gonna tuck my toes under as well. We're gonna be shifting back. We've done this hip stretch before. So it's an inner thigh stretch. It's a hip stretch. It's a reach. You can definitely reach your arms forward and we're gonna be shifting forward into it and backward. Yeah, the shaking, the little rebound, the spinal action. It's been called so many things. It can be a really great way to release energy. And if any of you follow me on Instagram, I did a post the other day on free movement and certainly meaning not, not currency free, but just having no rules, 
you know like we're working in a technical way right now so we're we're working some rules but free movement really does constitute like just seeing what your body wants to do it can be anything at all let's go one more time from here sit back to the depth that is, is comfortable for you walk your hands towards your extended foot and then just reach sometimes that can bring a really nice inner thigh and outer rib cage stretch good all right walk all the way back up stay in this position for just a moment you want your hands underneath your shoulders and this time instead of sitting back we're right up over that knee and i'm going to untuck my toes take your same arm as extended leg behind your head and then we're going to rotate your elbow to touch your opposite elbow getting a twist of the upper back and then you're going to rotate all the way up what i'm not doing is letting everything change with the rotation of my upper back so it's that upper back rotating coming into touch we'll just do a couple of these just looking for a little bit of what's called thoracic mobility upper back integration yeah so to finish the thought about the free movement like heck yes it is such a great way to just identify what you're feeling in your body transition through it there is a I think it's less of a release and more of a transition, more of a shift, because you can't avoid the emotions that you're feeling, but you sure can move through them. And movement is a wonderful way to do that. Let's go one more time. Let's open it up here, and then I just like to really stretch and let the twist go where it wants to go. Yeah, good, and we'll come down. Let's open the knees, just take a moment to come off the wrists, reaching forward. The hip mobility is so important for Pilates that it's nice to get a little bit of it going on before we get down onto our backs. So let's once again extend the leg out, just about hip level. Tuck your toes under if you like, that's going to give you a little more toe stretch. We shift back, yowie, I'm going to reach my arms forward, and then we shift forward. That's it. Reach it all the way back and reach it forward. Excellent. Stretching it back. I have a nice playlist set up today. You kept me, knowing you all would be waiting here for me to come in and do this class, and then also like, just knowing that the, it would be warm in here and we'd feel better after the fact. That, that got me going today, <laughs> for sure. God. Last two. We'll do one more to stay and do that shift of the reach, reaching the heel back and then taking your hands over and big stretch. Good. Breathing in to the side body, to the inner thigh. Good. Coming all the way back up. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips, untuck your toe, take your arm to the back of your head and then come in to touch your elbow, and then rotate your upper back. And you might find that one side moves a little bit easier than the other. The goal is to really keep the hips pretty static in the same position. You're supporting yourself always. Not just letting all of your weight come down onto your wrists, but really feeling a sense of front to back support from your abdomen to your back body. So understanding that three-dimensional aspect of your torso. Front, sides, back, everything works as a team. Good. Excellent. Last one. Lift it up, take your big stretch, open it up. Good, come on down. Let's come to a seated position. Of course, you can sit on a cushion, a bolster, a block, whatever you have. You can go into a chair. You could even come standing here. And we're gonna gather our ball as well. So go ahead and gather that. I'm just gonna sit cross-legged for this first one. So we're gonna be working in an arc. Now, if you had a ball with a letter or numbers on it, you would arc the ball overhead 
turn, find one letter, track one letter, and say the letter or the number. And I see two. Reaching it up overhead, find it overhead, and I see D. And the idea is that we go side to side. But since I'm guessing the majority of you don't have letters or number balls yet, I'm gonna call out something to just say. So I might go up vegetable and you just say the first vegetable that comes to mind. Are you with me? Hopefully so. All right, let's take the ball in our right hand. We're gonna start just reaching up. The name of a car. The name of a winged animal. They're gonna get weird. The name of a circular fruit. Don't think about it too much. The name of a plant. A species or type of dog. An emotion. Good. The color of a zucchini. Oh, tricky, right? <laughs> the shape of your heart. Also tricky. Let's go a couple more. The material that a road is made of. Good. A prop you use in Pilates. Something that you have to do at the end of the year. An item of clothing you wear in the cold. And finally, the color of your lips. Good, come all the way in. How did we do? <laughs> it's, it's the idea of doing two things at one time. So, just to up this game, we're gonna play one more time. And I think I'm gonna take this one on my knees just because it'll give me a little bit more motion because the next level is to toss the ball and see if you can catch it. We're going to drop the ball. It is just how it's gonna go. But we'll go one more round and I'm gonna keep this one a little bit uh, more simple by asking you the color of different things. Okay? Are you ready? Throw it or do what you just did in an arc. We had to do the first one. Wah, there it goes. Okay? I know, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, here we go for real. The color of an apple. The color of an orange. The color of a kumquat. The color of a grape. Hello, I caught it. <laughs> you have to get used to how easy. <laughs> the color of butter lettuce. The color of meat. The color of your first car. The color of your favorite shirt. The color of your pet. Woo. The color of your hair. The color of your nails. The color of your house. The color of your bedspread. <laughs> the color of your plants. Come on, come back. Let's do a couple more. The color of the sky right now. The color of your eyes. The color of your hair. <laughs> Last two. The color of a tomato. The color of a peach. Rest. All right. How are you feeling? Probably a little frazzled, right? Let me know in the chat how this is going for you. Keep the ball nearby. We're gonna go ahead and swivel our legs around and start to roll down through your spine. Rolling through the spine to get all the way down to the bottom. And then let's just walk our heels in close. We're gonna go into a spinal bridge. So as we roll the hips back, in a spinal bridge, remember it's about Peeling one bone at a time up off of the mat. And as you roll back down, it's about placing one bone at a time down onto the mat. You can also think of this as one pair of ribs at a time, just rolling through. It's like your back body is giving the mat 
a bit of a massage. Good. <laughs> Laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, you didn't drop it once. I love it. Great job. So ideally, when we work with these brain games, let's just do a little more with the spine. When we work with the brain games, ideally, they should get easier over a period of time. If they get harder, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It means you're giving yourself an adequate challenge. If they get easier, then it means you usually need to make it harder next time. So like maybe that's instead of sitting, it's standing. Maybe instead of standing on two feet, it's standing on one foot. I mean, you can go as far as to cover one eye as you're tossing the ball around. There's a lot you can do, but it's always about stimulating your brain. All right, go ahead and bring that ball in close. We're gonna take it in between whoa, your inner thighs, just by your knees. Take your arms out to a T, keep your feet flat, and just feel that center engage again, abdomen to back, sides together. Squeeze into the ball, and then rotate your knees as far as you can over to the left. Keep that squeeze nice and strong, and think of recovering by reaching your waist back down to the mat and then we'll go in the opposite direction. So this one is meant to be easy. It's a great one for any SI joint issues because you're stabilizing during your twist. So often that can give you a little bit more support instead of feeling like you're throwing yourself off at all. So just a couple more twists through the back. Ideally your chest is staying wide, facing the ceiling shoulder blades heavy to the mat. That's an extra thought for me. Let's go one more over to the right side. Keep that squeeze nice and strong. Good. All right, find that heavy pelvis, heavy rib cage, squeeze into the ball, bring your legs up to tabletop, flex your feet. I want you to roll your knees inward and your feet outward and then roll your heels inward, but don't drop the ball. So you're pressing your feet apart, finding a little more inner thigh, pressing your heels together, maybe finding the back of the inner thigh, more hamstring. So more onto the front of the leg, press your heels together, squeeze the ball more onto the back of the leg. And if you need to hold on to your legs to help yourself out, that's always an option. It's a good one actually, it helps you keep that control. Go a couple more, rolling it in, remembering to breathe. Good, last one. Nice work, all the way in, good squeeze, and then just hug your knees into your chest for a moment. If you wanna drop the ball for a second, you can. Really nice, good. All right, let's lower the feet down, take your, the ball into your hands. We're gonna curl ourselves up to our first abdominal curl and just stay in a place that allows you to be there. So some place, a shape you can hold. And we're just gonna toss the ball for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and roll all the way down. So we're distracting ourselves in this shape to stay in it a little bit longer and also practicing a little coordination. Let's try it again. Deep breath in. Exhale, curl forward. Maybe you go up a little higher this time. Maybe you just find more strength in your shape. Toss it eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower all the way down. Yeah, let's do it again. Curling up, exhale. Bring your chin to your throat and then just follow with your eyes. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lower all the way down. Good, one more time, curl it up. Let's see where you can come to. Here we go. Eight and seven, six and five, four, three, two, one all the way down good all right stay down now bring the ball in between your knees once again this time to tabletop you can always go back to the version of the feet on the ground arms to a t we're going to squeeze into the ball and take it as far over to the left as you can without losing weight in your right shoulder squeeze into the ball send your waist back to the mat to bring it back to center we go the other direction 
reach it across. Press it in, come all the way up to center. Here we go. Try not to arch your back. Think of your whole torso rolling like a, a cylinder from side to side. So the back rolls, the abdomen rolls, the sides roll, and then everything comes back to center. Let's go a couple more. Keep your breath going. Good, last one. Awesome, pull it all the way into center. Take the ball, lower your left leg down, reach your right leg up and you can lower the ball down by your side. Let's hold on to the back of your right leg, stretch it up and then bend it all the way down. We'll do that a couple more times, stretch it up, bend it down and last one, stretch it up. Bend it down. We're going to straighten it up to stay. You always have the option of hanging onto your leg. Let's reach your toes nice and long. We're going to draw a little circle on the ceiling. Everything else is stable. If you want to bring your arms down by your side so you can make the circle bigger, that's fine. Just make sure that everything else is just staying grounded, letting the leg be free, and just exploring that circle of your thigh bone in your hip socket. One more in this direction. Let's reverse, taking it outside to come up and in. You have a little more stability with the left leg bent. A little more freedom to explore. So go for it. That's it. Let's go one more here. Reach it up. Lower it all the way down. We're gonna keep this leg nice and bent. Reach your arms to the sky. Curl forward and reach to the bent leg. Now, grab onto it as much as you can, and then just start to slide your left foot forward and see if you can use the slide of that left leg to come all the way up. We'll straighten the left leg at the top, bend the right, hands behind, and roll back this way. Just a little help on the way down. Once you get down to the bottom, switch. Curl, press down through your feet, down through your leg to come up, switch, roll down. Remember, this is about core strength, but it's also about spinal mobility. So let your spine be supple and mobile. Try to find the path of least resistance for you. Let's go one more time. Switch it. Exhale. Coming all the way up, and then switch it to come down. Good. Keep that right leg bent. We'll bend the left knee in, hands behind. And we're going to go ahead and extend it up, and then all the way down. Up, all the way down. A couple more like this. Let's go one more time, up and down. Good. Then let's extend our leg up, reach the leg, and then either use your hands for your circles or bring your hands down by your side and explore the circle that your hip needs today. So we go down and around. Almost like a half circle. It's always looking at ways to create more space for my hip. Good. Let's go one more. And then reverse it. Side and up through the center. Letting your hips be free. I'll tell you, one of the things that's really helped my freedom in my hips is the strengthening that we get from rebounding. Because certainly you can get grippy in the rebounding, but once you let, once you realize that you've overgripped, you have to find the freedom. So it's like that nice balance. Let's reach that leg all the way down. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Reach forward, curl forward, and then press. Like I'm in your comfort zone with this. I like that, Colleen. I want to hear more, but make sure you're moving. <laughs> yeah. So just switching, reaching. Yeah. It's funny because I I live so on the fringe now of fitness, which is part of the reason why uh, 
part of the reason why we don't grow faster because we're not doing the typical things, you know? But we're fine. I went through this whole thing yesterday at home with my son and he was taking some time to do his videos. And uh, I was like looking at algorithm stuff for YouTube and oh man, it's just like when they showed me what who my competitors were, we're just not doing the same thing. And that's okay, because it's not even close. Not better or worse, it's just not the same intention. So if you're in the comfort zone with me, I'm happy for that. All right, let's come all the way up. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do a little switcheroo with the ball. Now, your goal, if you choose to accept it, is to use your peripheral vision to move the ball around instead of looking at the ball the entire time. We have two options. We're gonna take a little curl back. Option one is just to do this. Again, I can see the ball, but I'm not tracking it with my eyes. Option two is to find a little balance and go here, okay? We're gonna not track for the first round, take a break, and then track for the second round. Yeah, and we're just about there, we're getting close. You ready? Okay. Find your beginning pose. I'm gonna stay on the ground and then I'll lift my legs up. Ready, set, just keep looking directly forward and switch, and switch. If you can get it with the beat, that'll help. Good. If you're ready to bring it up for a balance, go for it. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Give me eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come on down, take a little stretch forward. Yes. Oh, I understand, Colleen, thank you. So if we have been pushing the boundaries with the status quo and this is comfort with the familiar, that's great. That means the habit has now become part of the lifestyle, looking at things in a different way. I'm here for that, 100%. All right, one more little uh, abdominal challenge with the ball. We're gonna go back into that curl for a moment, and this time, toss the ball, but don't look at it. Meaning, you're looking forward, but you're not trying to find it with your eyes. You're training your peripheral vision, okay? So we're here, we're rolling back, or you can have your little balance into your mini teaser here and then if you're ready whoops I already looked at it so toss it <laughs> but don't look at it it's very hard to not do it but this is a great training mechanism for expanding our visual field good we're here for eight four two and rest, really nice. All right, let's put the ball off to the side. We're gonna take our leg open. Find a nice wide position here, sitting on both sits bones. Be in a chair, be on a block if you need to. Reach to the ankle, ground through your opposite hip. And just start to open your chest up a little bit. Start to rotate your chest to the sky. Get a little stretch and then let's add the arm. And bring it all the way up, rotate hands on either side, and then let's stretch it forward. Good, roll all the way up, and then bend in. So what's interesting about working these visual aspects is that, let's take our stretch to the other side. There are places where we all have blind spots, right? And I don't mean blind in the literal terminology, but you know, our world is very small often. And so, you know, there is that rule, the 20-20-20 rule. For every 20 minutes of screen time, you look up for at least 20 seconds at something that's 20 feet far away. And that expands your panoramic vision, your bigger vision. The issue with everything being so small is that it, we do 
Our body does work on a use it or lose it principle. So if we're only looking at something small, then our ability to see more in our vista in front of us can possibly lessen. It's not an absolute, right? But we just become more conditioned to looking at what's directly in front of us. One of the things, one of the ramifications to that paradigm of only looking at the small stuff on your screen, let's roll up, unfortunately is that sometimes it translates to the small things in your life or in your day being the only things that exist. In fact, one of the ways that they suggest people work with anxiety attacks is to look at a panorama if you're having like ruminating thoughts or very panicked thoughts. It's like, don't look down, look up and out and see if you can pull in more. And sometimes that reminds you that there's more than what's going on in your head that feels very important at this time. All right, one more stretch on either side. Let's take this leg out to the side. Let's just take the arm down and just take a nice long reach. Good. If you can take your hand down, wonderful. If you can put your leg back, wonderful. And that'll give you a little extra hip stretch. Good. And then come all the way back up. Another side. What does my tattoo say on my foot? Oh, my tattoo on my foot says three of my core values. Love, trust, and faith. And I am a person who is brought up in a very avant-garde household, so I think faith is whatever connects you to something beyond yourself, what lights you up from the inside. And so I think when love is present, when trust is present, and when you have an anchor to something bigger than yourself, you're doing okay. My grandfather used to say, when I was going through like little teenage things, he used to say, well, are you breathing? And I'd go, yeah, grandpa. And he'd say, well, I guess life must be not that bad. <laughs> Let's go ahead and come to standing. Uh, this is a man who was a POW, so yes. <laughs> Let's reach our arms up and press all the way up. Good, all right, release everybody. That 30 minutes went by way too fast for me. Way too fast for me, I hope it was okay for you. My music's gonna go away, but let's check in with our questions. Why did the movement matter to me today? How can I use it as a means of support during my week? And what is a good next step for my body today? What's it gonna be for you? Yeah, what's it gonna be? I know for me, um, I didn't get as much of a satisfying walk outside as I normally do, so I'm gonna go jump on my rebounder for a little while. And I would definitely invite you to do something active with your body if you're feeling good and, and juicy and nourished. Now's the time to kind of just like take yourself out to play, maybe go on a walk, maybe if you have a walking pad or a treadmill, that would be good for you. Stay tuned, tomorrow we're coming in for a recovery class, which is gonna be an active recovery with a meditation at the end. So um, I hope, I, I don't know, I feel a ton better in my own body, I hope you do too. It's just sometimes you need to get back in there and remind yourself that you are more than just a person who is cold. <laughs> You're more than just a person surviving the winter, you know? Yeah. Well, I will. I want to join you on the rebounder. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I, I am. I'm gonna turn on some like really great music, and I'm just gonna bounce with my eyes like not looking out. I'm gonna turn the lights off, and I'm gonna go nuts. So that is what I would suggest you do too. Get your best playlist out and just let it go or take another class. <laughs> Either way, listen, we're, we're closing in, we're, get, we're moving up, we're closing on the 800 subscribers. Thank you for everybody who shows up every single week. Remember to watch classes when you're not. The, unfortunately, the live stream views don't count towards all your views. Come on, YouTube, help a sister out. But the classes you watch at another point in time do, so you want to keep me on in the background I'll send you some good energy uh, our goal is by April to get to that 1100 subscriber mark that's what we're working towards and um, I am a patient person we've been doing good work all along the way so uh, uh, my day is off to such a good start I'm so happy Dick wonderful yes hang in there everyone hang in there we'll get through the winter 
We will, I promise you. Take good care. Go order your brain speed ball. Scroll to, to the top. It'll be worth it. Foam rollers coming soon too. All right, have a good day. Flashlight. <laughs> you come